Hello, welcome to the Alone Show. I'm your host, John May Alone. In this episode, no regulars, because reasons, as always. As for our guest, she's from Atlanta, Georgia, and she is. Well, you're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Nisha Glenn. Thank you for the well welcome. I appreciate it. I hope everybody is having an amazing day on this uh, beautiful Wednesday. Yes, I guess. <laughs> so, how's life? Life is what they call lifing right now. Um, you know, we have to take life's journey as it is. I'll give it a few minutes. She'll know eventually. I'm sorry? Oh, you're back. Your, your audio got, got cut off for some reason. Oh, did it? That's weird. Yeah, so uh, I, didn't, okay. I didn't catch anything you just said. Okay, well, you asked me how was life, um, and I started giving my uh, spill on how life is right now. So do I need to repeat how is life? Yes, yeah, so you said what life is, is lifing right now, and then boom, you're off. <laughs> well, what I said that is what I've learned in life is just life be lifing, and to just embrace the journey, trust the journey, and enjoy your life. Uh, I do believe in not complaining, so I'm not going to complain. All right. Very good. And is there anything you're currently doing at the moment? Actually, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, speaking with you. I'm enjoying uh, your accent. I am currently located in Atlanta, Georgia right now, and the weather is beautiful. So right now, I am just so focused on being able to be a, a guest on your podcast. Okay, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So what, what is it you mainly do for a living? For a living. So as girls and women, we wear many hats. And currently, I am in the technology sector. I have a passion for education as well as technology. And right now, I'm currently running a nonprofit organization called Educated Girls Rock, where I'm all about encouraging our girls to stay in school, complete their education. Of course, I promote higher education to some degree, but I want them to continue chasing their dreams and accomplishing their goals. So I am in the process of right now doing a lot of different workshops with girls in high school and Poor woman. Her audio got cut off again. I don't know why it's continuously getting cut off. I know, right? And you're back again. Yeah. That is it's weird. Play, playing tr it's playing tricks on us. It is. Wow. Okay, that's not good. That's awful, yeah. Yeah. So I can, um, you know, go ahead and repeat uh, what I'm currently doing right now. I have a nonprofit organization called Educated Girls Rock. I am the founder I am all about encouraging our girls to stay in school and complete their education. So I provide them with tools and resources to help them navigate while they're navigating through their educational journey while in high school. And I'll also provide them with tools to kind of assist them after high school as well. All right. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. What inspired you to take this path and inspire young women? <laughs> So everyone has a story and I'm so thankful to just be able to be on your platform to share my story. Well, the passion came in um, years ago um, when I was working for a company by the name of Verizon Wireless and uh, I was in the process of getting laid off and I knew I always wanted to work with young girls. And um, my passion has always been something in reference to graduation, I love education. So I was like, why not? I was in school at the time to get my master's in education. So I'm like, educated girls rock too. I was raised in an environment where education was not important. So I was able to navigate through that process on my own and break cycles. I was the first person in my family. And when I say family, I mean immediate family 
to graduate from high school. My mother didn't graduate from high school. My father didn't graduate from high school. Sister and brother didn't graduate from high school. Uncle and auntie, grandmother and grandfather. So I'm thankful that I was able to break that cycle. So I always had a passion for targeting young girls in high school because that's where I struggled the most. When I, I was in high school, I was so looking forward to being able to walk across that stage and graduate. So that's what that's what led me to actually start the nonprofit organization called Educated Girls Rock. Wow. Impressive. Thank you. What, you're welcome. What a journey you've been through. Yes. And still navigating through to this day. Fantastic. Yes. Are there any jobs or opportunities you haven't done yet? However, you really want to yes. get on the pedal and do those someday? Yes, actually, I am so impressed with just the podcast world. I'm currently in the process of starting my own podcast. So that's something I always wanted to do. I'm a true believer in just doing it, whether you're perfected or not, just, just, you know, get it done, launch it. So you would not leave this earth saying something in reference to, at least I didn't try. I love the quote that states, nothing beats a failure, but a try. So I am going to try the podcast world and start my own podcast, which my ultimate goal is to allow this podcast to assist the young girls that I actually work with in high school. So I am about to join the podcast world. So that's something I've always wanted to do. Nice. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. What have been the high points and the low points in your journey so far? Um, the high points, I will honestly have to say being able to accomplish a lot of the goals that I've set for myself as a single mother. Um, I have two children and um, my highest point was making sure that they finish high school, which they both have graduated from high school. And then I've also have one college graduate as well. So I honestly have to say that has been the high point right now, being able to witness my, my kids being able to complete their education and then having one to graduate from college as well. Okay. I can say that. And my low point has been just navigating with the different career paths when you become a woman. After high school, I try to tell girls and young women, whatever career path that you may have after you graduate high school, nine times out of 10, or maybe eight out of 10, is going to change. So, you know, when I originally graduated from high school, I end up going to medical school. And then I end up uh, transitioning to technical. So just being able to inspire and empower these girls to let them know it's okay that your career path may change as you continue to grow through life. So I will have to say not more so it's been a, a, a struggle or a low, but just being able to figure out, you know, what you want to do in life throughout this journey. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Welcome. Where do you see yourself 10 year, 20 years from now? I got not 20. I'm not going to say my age, but I am thankful that I'm halfway through life. Um, my In the next 20 years, I definitely plan to be retired, not working hard, but hardly working and being able to leave a legacy for my children, as well as being able to impact as many lives as I can, not only through my humanitarian work with Educated Girls Rock, but also impacting, you know, men and women in some uh, capacity. So within the next 20 years, I just want to have a name for myself that say Nisha was able to impact my life in some way and be and be re completely retired. Fantastic. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, in the world. Ooh, I have so many different places I want to travel to. Um, that's a good question. I I would not, I don't know where I would live right now because I haven't been able to explore so many other parts of the world. 
Um, however, I can tell you about a place that I'm really wanting to visit, which is some part of South Africa. Not saying I would want to live there, but there is a place that is a place I want to actually visit. And so I can't say where I want to live right now because I haven't explored so many other different parts of this world. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yes. Who was the last person you've talked to? Today, the last person I talked to was my friend Felicia. Um, we love this um, <laughs> this coconut wine and it's seasonal. So sometimes it's very hard to find from a store. And so she called me earlier and told me she was able to get me a bottle of the wine. So she was the last person I actually talked to prior to speaking with you. So I'm super excited about that. Fabulous. Thank you. Welcome. What is the best way to travel? You know what? I love road trips. Of course, I love getting on the plane because it's quick and easy, but there is nothing like a road trip. And one of my ultimate goals, again, throughout this journey of life, is to do a road trip from for two weeks traveling from the south and end up on the west coast by car, by land. So I would have to say a road trip and traveling in the car has to be the best. Absolutely. Yes. Would you rather speak all languages or talk to animals? Ooh. I would say speak all languages. Yes, I do yes. the same. <laughs> I don't want to talk to no animals. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you've had someone in the past that stated they would rather talk to animals, right? I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. They, they, they did. <laughs> That's interesting. Mm hmm. Yes. Very. Very, very. Do you put the cereal first, then the milk, or the milk first, then the cereal? I pour the cereal first. I would love to meet someone that pours, pours the milk first and then the cereal. Yes. Can I pour uh, the cereal? Me, yes, same. If, 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 if anyone ever says that, I'd call out on them for that. Like, what is your thinking behind this? Why, why do you assume such things? But, but let me, can I ask you a question? Go on. Do you um, eat a ball eggs? Pardon? Bo like, do you boil eggs? Like, m m uh, eggs? Uh, I wouldn't know because I never eat eggs all that often. Oh, really? Well, the reason I ask because there's always this dilemma of people: do they boil the water first and then put the eggs in the water, or do they put the eggs in the pot first and pour the water over it? So that was just a a question since we were talking about uh, cereal and milk. Okay, good point. I can see, I can see where you're coming from. <laughs> yes. Where has been the furthest you traveled to from where you were originally from? Actually, the furthest, I did a tour of three years ago. I went to London, Paris, and Rome. So over there, European countries, um, that has been the furthest that I've traveled. Um, I will also like to visit somewhere in the Indian Ocean in the near future. So that will have to be the furthest so far to date. Nice, nice. Who's yes. the funniest person you've met? Oh, that I've met? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Besides myself, um, in person, does it have to be a celebrity or is it someone that I just know personally? It could be anyone you've known. Oof. The funniest person I know. Oh, wow. I can't think of because I have so many amazing people in my life that I've met that um, makes me laugh. I really can't think of the funniest person when I think about me. I, 
I consider myself a funny person, but I really can't think of the funniest person um, that I've actually met. But I have met a couple comedians uh, in the past. I've met uh, Mike Epps before. He was very, 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 very funny. So I, if I had to pick a comedian that I met in person before that was extremely funny, I would say Michael, Mike Epps. Cool, cool, cool. What could you give a 14-minute presentation on without any preparation? A 14-minute presentation. Oh, my God. Yes. I would, without, without any presentation, if someone was to say, hey, Nisha, I need you to come in immediately and do a 14-minute presentation, I would make that presentation on two things. One being you define your own success or two being overcoming and getting over your fears. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you ever heard of a drink called Banana Friche? No, I have not. I get that a lot. What is it? It's a banana flavored milkshake slash smoothie that has all the tingling sensations in the world. Okay, I would love to try that. I, I wonder, do they sell it over here in the United States? I, will, I, I love banana. I love bananas and I love anything with bananas. So I would definitely be open to trying it. All right. Very good. Very good. And it's called Banana Friche? Yes, it sure does. Banana Friche. Okay. Awesome. You, Thank you. You're welcome. Have you ever thought about living off the grid? <laughs> Um, yes, I thought about it. Uh, you know, those messages continue to come across your social media platform or across your phone. Could you give up your phone for a year for a million dollars? Or could you not be on social media for all this? time? And I will honestly say, yes, I could. And yes, I've actually thought about living off the grid. Yes. Nice. Now, now, for how long, I don't know, but I've definitely thought about it. Fair enough. How much time do you spend on the internet? Oh, my God. Okay. If I had to break it down, um, I would say more than five hours a day I spend on the internet, which I don't know if that's good or bad. To be honest, I've heard worse, so it can't be that bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've okay. Actually met, I've met people that, on average, they spend like 11, 12 hours on the internet a day. A day? Oh, that, no, that, that, that's too much. Well, unless it's, unless it's their job. I don't no, know. Unless it's their job, then that's, that's understandable. But otherwise... Yeah, yeah. How? How do you must have this much free time anyway? Exactly. <laughs> no Which way. It's wild. <laughs> exactly. I totally agree. No. Yeah, that's 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 wild. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is definitely. Yeah. If you were going to sail all across the globe, what be the what would be the name of your boat? Oh, my boat. Ooh. You know, I, I think I've mentioned this word um, a couple times since we've been um, on this recording, this podcast. I would probably name my boat Journey. Yes. Sweet. Yep, I would name my boat Journey. Very nice. Mm hmm Do you have any pets? No, I do not have any pets. I've always been a little terrified of pets, but I recently watched my cousin's dog while they travel for spring break and I let the dog stay at my house and everything. So that was a big, big, big fear of mine that I was able to recently get over. I, I, I kind of fell in love with the dog low key. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What about you? Do you do you have pets? 
No, I don't have any pets. Okay. What's the Yeah. weather like where you are right now? Right now, um, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm in Metro Atlanta in a city called Lawrenceville, Georgia. And the weather right now is it's a little cloudy, but it's warm outside. I'll say around 70, 72 degrees. So it's it's pretty pretty nice outside, just not sunny. Yeah, honestly, I'd say the same. It started out sunny at first, but then it got cloudy because uh, Yes. photosynthesis. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much, yeah, very cloudy. Oh, yeah. What if you could start a business or a, a new business, if you have any, what business would that be? You know, I've started a couple businesses, you know, like I said, one working on this podcast. I don't think that's considered a business because I'm adding it as an initiative up, up, up under my Educated Girls Rock, you know, programming. But if I was to start a business, um, a new business, it would have to be something that encompasses technology. I love tech. And I've been thinking about like a technical business that can kind of solve a problem. I haven't yet figured out what that would be yet. And that's something that I've, you know, been writing about, thinking about. But if I was to start a business, it would have to be something within technology. Smart move. Yes. What would you do if you won the lottery? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, you know how we just talked about going off the grid, right? Yes. <laughs> I always tell my family and friends, when I win the lottery, I'm going to speak it into existence. I am literally going off the grid for two weeks. Like, nobody will hear from me. Nobody would know where I am, of course, for at least two weeks. But the first thing that I would do when I went to law, of course, I would lawyer up and all that different type of stuff. I would not buy any major materialistic things. I would take a lot of my family and friends on one of the most amazing vacations ever. That's the first thing I would do with my money. Great. Mm hmm. Have you ever met anyone famous? Oh, yes. I've met a couple of famous people. Um, like I said, I definitely make, met Mike Epson when we were talking about comedians. But I would have to say the last famous person that I was like very close up, close and personal with was uh, Mary J. Blige. Okay. Cool, cool. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you teleport yourself 500 years into the future? Or 500 years into the past? Uh, definitely 500 years into the future. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely the safest option there is. <laughs> I want that. If somebody says the past, like, I would just love to get in their brains. Yeah, because, uh, what are you, what are you actually thinking? Well, I might take a risk going to the past. Okay, if you were to take that risk and go into the past, let me challenge you. What is something that you think if you had the opportunity to change what is going on today because you were go back into the past, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. This is this is a wild take. <laughs> just one thing. I know it's a lot of different things, but let's just give me one. Well, if at any point I go back too far, yet somehow live to be a couple hundred years, I might be able or want to prevent both world wars. Okay, okay. Because those two, uh, those were not good times. It's very devastating. It, it, if that never happened, well, everyone would be happy. But, but at the same time, the downsides, we wouldn't have the events that we have today. So, uh, correct, correct. We wouldn't know. Okay.
That's a fair answer. Yes. Good, good answer. Good answer. I like that. Yes, me too. <laughs> awesome. What kind, of, what kind of music do you often listen to? I am so versatile when it comes to music. I love uh, gospel music. I love R&B music. I love rap. I love jazz. I listen to pop music. And, um... Oh, no. It happened again. The audio's cut off. And then in really? a few seconds... And then, and, 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 oh, my gosh. I was about to say, and in a few seconds, you'll come back. And there you are. You came back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Well, I'll go ahead and answer the question. We were talking about the type of music I like, the genres of music. And I said, I yeah. love gospel. I love rap. I love R&B music. I love pop. Um, I love jazz. So those would be the, the um, genres of music that I love listening to. Very nice. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. I'm also very versatile in my music tastes. I like classical, pop, mm -hmm. techno, house Ooh. music. So yeah, okay. it's all over the place. Yes. Yeah, house music. I will listen to it if I'm like out and about, but it's nothing that I will actually just put on and say, hey, I want to listen to some <laughs> techno or house music. Fair enough. It's uh, yeah. Music is subjective. It's not for mm -hmm. everyone. Exactly. Yes. What happens in real life but rarely gets portrayed in movies? Oh, what happens in real life but rarely gets portrayed in movies. I'm trying to figure out what has happened maybe in my life or someone else's life that I don't really see in movies. Um, wow, I don't know. I can't think think what because because these days, I mean, majority of movies that I watch have been watching and seen, they're all been like reality. So I can't think of one thing that happens in real life that I see in movies because it's like now we're seeing things in movies that is probably going to happen in real life, honestly. Yeah, that that's crazy. I know, right? Yeah, so I can't think of it because right now you're seeing more things in movies than you're seeing in real life. And then some of those things that are happening in movies is happening in real life. So yeah. movie, movies are taking all of real life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you could see one movie again for the first time, what movie would that be? Oh, I have so many favorites, but one of my favorite all-time movies, it's a love movie, it's called Notebook. Have you ever saw that before? The Maybe. Notebook? It's a love story. It's 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 so good. So I would say the a movie called Notebook. The Notebook. Great. Very nice. Thank you. Welcome. I have to say notebook. Very good, yes. And do if I had to oh go ahead. I was just gonna... I, was gonna I was gonna ask you, do you prefer headphones or earbuds? Headphones all day long. Yeah. I'd yes. Say the same. <laughs> I do not like those earphones, earbuds going in my ear. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't mind with either, so long as I'm comfortable lying on my on, on the side of my head in bed. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. And that is all we have for this episode. It's great having you on, Nisha, talking about expiring young girls and everything else along those lines it's been great thank you so much for the opportunity and i had an amazing time there was some definitely some challenging questions you made me think and i hope i did the same with you i really enjoyed this opportunity you sure have thank you you're welcome all and, right have an amazing week oh go ahead and, and until next time stay tuned for more <laughs>